And as Mrs. Pavic said, we're going to tell you a little bit about our trip and where we're going and then how you can ask questions about what we're doing while we're traveling. So we can answer your questions while we're on the road and you can learn more about the world that way. So as I said, we are going to go on a 14-month around-the-world trip that we're taking beginning in January. And we're taking this trip so students like you can learn more about geography and the world that we live in. We've actually traveled all over the world before. We've actually been to 40 countries on six continents. And a lot of that travel was with our kids. When our kids were about your guys' age, they were actually at the time in seventh grade and fifth grade, we took them around the world for four months. And on that trip, we traveled to Africa, India, Australia, Asia, and Europe. And now our kids are in college, so they're not at home anymore. So we're taking another big trip like this. So we want to talk about why we're taking this trip. So before we do that, let's talk a little bit about geography and why it's important to us and it should be important to you as well. So, I know it's after lunch here, but um, we're going to take a little bit of a, a pop quiz and see how much you guys know about geography in the world. We're going to ask you guys four questions. We'll see if you guys know the answers or not. You can raise your hand when we ask it. And these questions were also asked of 18 to 24 year old students in the United States as well. So we'll also see how you guys perform against them. So first question, we'll see how you do. Does anyone, can anyone raise their hand and tell me where the Pacific Ocean is on this map? Okay, let's see, over here. Can you, can you show me, can you show me? On the left, stand up and show Yeah, stand up and show Yeah, this is, requires participation here. Get this come up in front. Show me. You know it's after lunch and everything like Where is it? Right here. Very good. Let's give him a hand. So, very good. Pacific Ocean is actually here on the map. It's actually also here on the map as well. Because it starts over here and goes all the way around. And this is a flat map, but as you know the world's round, so it's also over here. And you guys got that right away. I think most of you knew that. But did you know that 29% of young Americans 18 to 24 can't find the Pacific Ocean on a map? <laughs> you guys are obviously you guys are actually smarter than that. So let's see the next question now. Let's see how you do on this one. So can someone raise their hand and tell me what continent the country of Sudan is in? Which continent is the country of Sudan in? Way in the back there. Africa. Very good. Thank you. So, we'll show you. It's in the continent of Africa. So there it is. It's actually the, one of the largest countries in Africa. But 20% of Americans actually didn't get this right. They thought it was in Asia. Okay. So you guys knew that one. So you're you're ahead of the game there. Next question. Which country has more people, the United States or China? Whoa, lots of answers here. Oh, right here in the front. Very good, China. I think, I think again, a lot of you raised your hands. I think you knew the answer, but this may surprise you. So we have 312 million people in the United States today. China has 1.3 billion people. So that's a lot of people. So they have about four times as many people in China as we do in the United States. So 45% of young adults said they knew that China had the most, because I think most people in this room knew that too. But they thought that China only had twice as many people as we did, not four times as many. And 33% of the people surveyed actually thought we had more like a billion or two billion people rather than only 300 million. So again, a little bit of, a little bit, didn't quite get it there. So next slide, last question. This is about language. This is the hardest question. So we'll see how you guys do on this one. Which language is the most commonly spoken first or native language in the world? Right here in the orange sweatshirt. Spanish? No, that's very close though. That's one of the top three. Over here, English. That's one of the top three as well. German. No, that's in the top ten, but it's not one of them. How about over on this side? Yeah, you. Chinese. Chinese. Very good. Excellent. So, Chinese. Chinese 
and this word ni hao means hello or hi in Chinese. Chinese, Mandarin Chinese to be more specific because in China there's several different languages. Mandarin Chinese is spoken by over one billion people in the world. And in China, and in China obviously spoken. And in China it's, there's 845 million people that speak it as their first language. Now English and Spanish are number two and number three in the world. Some people say Spanish is number two, some people say English is number two, but they're very close together in number of speakers. So English is spoken by about 400 million people in the world as their first language, and altogether it's spoken by about 700 million people in the world as their first, second, third language, and so on. So even though English isn't the first one, it's not a bad guess because English is the most widely spoken second language in the world. So people who don't have English as their first language, chances are they have it as their second language. Okay, so you guys did really good on that quiz. It's, it's pretty hard. The questions got harder and harder, as you see. But as you may have also seen, a lot of the young Americans, we talked about 18 to 24 year olds, didn't do quite as well. And in fact, there was a test that was given to Americans in eight other countries, and we finished second to last on that test in terms of geography knowledge. So the countries of Canada, France, Germany, Great Britain, Italy, Japan, and Sweden all finished ahead of us on that geography test. So some of you may think that geography is just a study of maps. So here's a map for seventh graders for taking world history, I believe. You may, may or may not have seen a map like this, but in world history you're probably learning about exploration and about sailing on oceans, looking at land, and those early explorers explored places and made maps. So this is a very old map that was made a long time ago. You even can see over here where we live today in the United States, it's not quite sort of halfway mapped out but not all the way because at the time they didn't know what the United States looked like. They came here by oceans and that's all they could see. So maps like this were very important to geography as far as telling you where things are, but really geography is much more than that and that's what we're trying to show on this trip is how much more it is and how much more meaningful it can be to us and to you also. So while this information is useful, in today's global world we can See this type of map. This is a different kind of map. This map's actually from NASA, from the from the space agency. Okay? And on here, it's a little hard to see, but on here you see all these lights all over the world. They actually took pictures from space at night and they put all of them together because it's not nighttime at the same time everywhere. But you can see all these different places lit up around the world. So here is Hawaii. Okay? It's lit up in the middle of the ocean. Here's the United States, of course. Here we are on the West Coast, but you've got lots of people living in the East. South America is not very lit up, is it? No. Okay. This is, this is the Amazon basin where the Amazon River is. Not very many people live there. But over here, a lot more people live. Over in Africa, also not very lit up, except for down here in South Africa. Europe. India. One of the most populated countries in the world. Japan. Very high density, lots of people live close together, very lit up. China, the eastern coast of China, we just saw China has a lot of people. China, very lit up. But this is also China here and not as many people. And then Australia, New Zealand, again, people live near the oceans, but not in the middle of Australia. Let's give you a couple of exam examples of why this is important. So let's say you're selling, you're grown up now, you have your own business, you're selling an iPhone, you're selling bikes, or you're selling clothes. To be successful, it's a global economy now. You can't just sell things in the United States. I can sell my iPhones in the United States and I can give them to so many people, but there's a big world out there. A lot of people don't live in the United States. I want to sell my iPhone or my bikes or my clothes to other countries. So in order to do that, I have to understand where do people live? How would they use my product? Do they need bikes in this country? What kind of clothes would they need? In order to be successful, I have to understand all about those people, how they live, how they use things. Similarly, if I was going to build a hospital, I'd want to make sure that this hospital was built in an area where it was needed. If I put a hospital someplace and there aren't a lot of babies being born, then probably my hospital is not going to be very full. So I have to make sure I build my hospital where it makes sense. And then lastly, you guys are in a new school here. When they built this school, they had to say, okay, is this the right place to build it? Do people live around here? Are there enough kids to fill this school for 7th and 8th grades? 
Is this good land to build on? Is there enough room? Is this good, are there streets around here so parents can drop us off and that sort of thing? So again, these are all questions, not just about maps, but about people, where they live, how they use things, and that's all part of geography as well.